Welcome, Sahaja. How are you today? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm um, good. Thank you. Um, so today, um, for all those who are listening, we'll be talking about how to manage challenging and happy emotions, such as, for example, sadness or anger or frustration. Now, the reason why I really wanted to talk about this topic is I think it's, an, it's a great opportunity for us to talk about uh, the difficult emotions that we do experience in life and, and, what, and work at, on ways that we can actually very quickly um, manage and process these emotions. So today, uh, Sahaja, um, she, uh, just to talk about how I know her first, um, she, she is my meditation teacher and she is also um, my personal um, mentor. I've known her for, I think, three years from memory. <laughs> And, um, and I have recommended for, uh, her work to many of my friends who have um, also taken up um, meditation and, um, and all the services that you offer. So um, in terms of her background, Sahaja is an experienced counselor, uh, meditation and mindfulness teacher and trauma resolution expert. Uh, she teaches people how to generate their own happiness and manage anxiety and strong emotions. Uh, she's worked with clients such as counsellors, government organisations, business owners, not-for-profit organisations, and she's also designed, developed and delivered more than 150 courses, including workshops, retreats and online courses. She has delivered one-on-one -on -one counselling to more than 2,000 people uh, in her business as, as to date. So um, today she'll be sharing with us a lot of her experience or wisdom and some of the practices that she used. So thank you, Sahaja, for being here. Thank today. you. <clears throat> All right, okay. All right, so um, the first question I have um, here is, do you think that it is important to be aware of negative, or un unhappy emotions? Uh, I do think it's important. Uh, uh, I think actually it's crucial to being able to cultivate quality of life. Um, we need to be self-aware so that we can uh, have the reality that we want for ourselves. And I, I love the Dalai Lama's quote, um, that the purpose of life is to be happy. It's so simple, but uh, I think it's, uh, I think there's a truth in that. I totally agree. I think um, that's <clears throat> a journey that we should all work towards to be happy. Mm. It's very hard to be happy. It, consistently, consistently, it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, so why do you think it is challenging for people to manage or, you know, process unhappy uh, emotions? Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we're wired to avoid pain and seek comfort. Um, and there's good survival reasons for that. And I think emotions are one of the most difficult things to experience, the most intense things to experience that we can experience in our body, especially if we're thinking about grief and uh, anxiety, depression. And I think that it's, you know, it makes sense that people would want to, to avoid those feelings. Um, but why do people find it difficult to manage these feelings. Uh, I think there's a lot of different reasons. Um, I think some feelings, unhappy emotions are not meant to be managed. They're meant to be expressed. They're meant to be felt. So for example, if you are experiencing grief, I think that you're meant to cry. You're meant to feel that if there's been a death in the family. We had a little pet die last night. And uh, so we've been feeling very sad here. And, and, and um, yeah, I, and another thing is um, if you if have had a boundary violation, if someone's pushing you around or is intimidating you or, um, 
uh, bullying you, then anger is an appropriate response to that and it should be be felt. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but I think that there's a lot of different reasons why we find it hard to manage emotions. Yeah, so like you mentioned that we tend to avoid the pain and we, we avoid the pain by, for me, for example, if I'm feeling sad, I would just sometimes might go onto Netflix and just watch for uh, yeah. a few episodes to try and avoid the pain. Or yeah. it could be that people who, um, who just want to eat, emotional eating, yes. feeling pain and they just want to avoid it. So um, yeah. throughout the time we've talked about, uh, you've, you've mentioned to me that when you are feeling these difficult emotions, unhappy yeah. emotions, it's a really good, it's actually something to look, really investigate, explore. It's a sign, right? Yes. Yeah. So for me, whenever I experience unhappy or unpleasant emotions, unwanted emotions, for me, that is, my emotions are very integral to my spiritual practice they are the pointer so if i'm not feeling good i take that as a sign that i'm something i'm doing or some way i'm being or some emotional place that i'm stuck in is not in alignment with a higher vision that i hold for myself or you said it earlier values or your 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 desires but for me, it's very, very spiritual in nature. And that is like, okay, so if I'm feeling frustrated right now or irritated, and I know that this is some kind of old emotional holding pattern that I get stuck in from my childhood, I know now in these moments that that's actually not my highest response to the moment. And the onus is on me to grow up Mm. and to choose a higher response, choose a better response, a more loving response. And whatever way I need to do to get there is my practice. So for me, that's, uh, it's, it's, my emotions are always telling me whether I'm on course or off course to the higher vision I have for myself, for my spiritual vision, for my potential, for my self-actualization, for what my soul is telling me is, is the highest path. So it's, a, it's, it's very much a sign. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing, Sahaja. I've really thought that um, in what you just said was, is gold. It's actually um, when you're feeling these unhappy emotions, the sadness or the anger or frustration, it's actually a good opportunity for us yep. to ex investigate, look into it and, and, and uh, relate to it and ask yourself these questions. So um, I never thought of it that way. I just used to feel like, you know, we, we all love positive emotions, happy emotions, mm -hmm. happiness, joy, um, love. And um, now I'm just going to, you know, reflect a little bit more. If there are unhappy emotions that arise, you know, really look into it and see, and, and it's an opportunity for you to look closer, to get to know yourself a little bit more. So I like what you really love what you said. It's a sign. It is a sign. Yeah. And I think it's so important not to judge ourselves when emotions come up, but to really be self-critical and be really honest with ourselves about that particular emotion because there are some instances where Netflix is actually a self-nurturing and self-loving action, something if you've been stressed out and busy and driving yourself hard and not giving yourself a break and you've got to a point where you're anxious and frazzled and fried and not feeling good, maybe it's a sign for you to just put your feet up just get out a box of chocolates if you really have been denying yourself pleasure and enjoy your life a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think if we, the more we become self-aware and we watch ourselves, the more we're willing to be honest with ourselves, we know there's a limit. We know when putting ourselves up and enjoying our, our feet up and enjoying a movie is a healthy self-nurturing practice but we also know when we go into episode three four and five that we are overindulging avoiding and that really because it starts to feel different it doesn't feel like ah oh, 
I'm resting. I'm just going to put all my busyness aside and just enjoy entertainment. And that addiction starts to come in. It's like, oh, I really should be. Something is now tapping me on the shoulder and saying, no, I should be doing something. I should be getting to bed to get quality sleep. No, I should be doing the dishes or I should be doing something else. No, I should be exercising and going for that walk that I planned at this time. So we have, it's all about being really honest with ourselves. Some emotions really need to be expressed. Some emotions need to be felt, just really felt and honoured. It's like, no, I need to feel this grief. I need to feel this disappointment in that person so that I can really get to understand or know whether or not it's right for me to continue a relationship with that person who keeps disappointing me so sometimes we need to feel our emotions to get the wisdom that the emotion holds for us to try to tell us something and there are other times we don't want to wallow in something I've been here a million times before this is what I do I wallow in this I get angry and I just regurgitate the story in my head justifying my anger justifying my whatever or justifying my my victim and in those instances we need to be honest and saying no this is a pattern it's not healthy I am not serving myself or anyone else by hanging out and regurgitating this negative feeling I know there's something tapping me on the shoulder inside of me that's saying go for a walk read a book let this go. Stop thinking about that. Do something healthy. You know, don't reach for that chocolate bar. Do you know what I mean? There, if we're honest with ourselves, we will find that there is always some small little voice of wisdom that is saying, try this, do this. It's now time to do that. We've got to really be honest and be willing to listen to that. Yes, uh, you've taught me so much about self-care, Sahaja, and it was quite funny um, when we talked about self-care once and you said to me, Leonie, self-care is not a checklist of all the things you need to do to make yourself feel better. You've got to be loving the experience and being yeah. nurturing towards yourself. And Yoga, check. <laughs> Ten-minute meditation, <laughs> check. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and you caught me you caught me in that moment because that's my tendency i'll have a list of a checklist of self-care activities but it's not about the list it's about being fully present in um for one of the self-care checklist on my checklist is yeah. actually like cooking yourself a really nice meal and being in the moment when you're chopping the vegetables preparing and cooking and then when you're sitting down fully enjoying it that is what self-care is. It's not about completing that checklist. <laughs> or it's not about the end, the photo, the Facebook or the Instagram photo at the end. <laughs> They're having that as the driving force. Yes. And miss, missing missing the, the self, the nourishment in yes. the self-care. Yes. Yeah. I think so. You know, we're all guilty of that too. Mm. Now, something else you've mentioned before uh, in the time we've worked together is gratitude. Tell me about that. It sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, gratitude mm. is the fastest, surest route, uh, pathway, practice to get from any negative state into a high vibrational positive state in any given moment, because no matter what you're feeling, it's relative. If you've lost, if I've lost a pet, someone else somewhere else in the world has just lost their entire family and, and their legs, you know? So what I know is that life is constant. And my life is full of gifts. Every we, we, Life is a gift. We are, if we look around us and we're honest, just the fact that I have food in my belly, running water, a roof over my head, money in the bank, I have freedom. I live in a country that's free from war, free from um, tyr government tyranny. You know, I, it, there are so many things to be grateful for. My daughter, happy, my health, my well-being. There are so many things at any given moment that if I, so if I just, reorient my focus away from the negative feeling and onto the things that all of the blessings in my life that I'm things that I'm grateful for gratitude actually there is scientific evidence now 
that when a person is in stress, their mind is they're dominated by their mind. When you go into gratitude, you go into the, the heart. And the practice of gratitude seems to um, brings the mind and the heart into a resonance that calms the mind. So the practice of get gratitude actually is scientifically proven to change your emotional state. Um, so the, I can't say anything more. Uh, that is the highest practice, the practice yeah. of gratitude. Yes, thank you, uh, Sahaja. The, you've taught me this in our meditation practices together and you take me from a state of whatever I'm feeling that is an unhappy emotion and then you would then invite me to think about all the things I'm grateful for and it does shift the actual emotions. It. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's really hard to understand until you experience it. And as you mentioned before, it's about the it's about when when you're stressed and the and the, the brain's active that it's in the mind and, and gratitude can then and activate your heart and your feeling. Yeah. And, and so um, I do think that gratitude's a great way to um, to start practicing yeah. on a daily basis. You know, so yeah. start with yeah. just three, three things that you're grateful yeah. for. Yeah, all you need to do is just bring bring something to you can do it right now. Bring yeah. something. What are you most grateful for in your life? Think yeah. about it. Like straight away, my daughter comes to mind, and immediately I start to fill up with the feelings of love and just happiness that I have her. Yeah. And then the second thing, my partner, and then and then whatever, my career, my clients. It's yeah. It's, it immediately changes your, starts to change your state. And the more you time you spend in a state of gratitude, and the, then the state of gratitude is magnetic and attracts more of the thing. Whatever you focus on grows. So if you focus on an unhappy emotion, you'll go down with the ship. But if you focus on feeling things that you're grateful for, it actually magnetizes and brings more of those things into your life. It's quite mystical. It is. Yeah, it serious is. Nature. <laughs> Thank God for gratitude. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. I've been practicing for 13 years and it's, yeah, it's a beautiful practice. Yes, yes. You've just yeah. made me realize how more, how, how important it is, even more so now, if you want to transform the yeah. unhappy emotion to yeah. become a more positive one. So the last question I have for you is um, simply, can you give an example of how you've worked with a client to navigate a difficult emotion, a, a simple practice? Okay, so one, uh, there's a five minute meditation, which is called coming home to yourself. And I do this with, uh, I can do this with any client at any time who is experiencing any negative emotion. And within five minutes, they will be home within themselves, feeling calm, clear, connected with themselves, free of negative emotion, and also connected to a higher guidance that comes from within them, their soul, if you like, their spirit or their intuition, their deep intuition. And I'll just, I'll just run you through that if you like um, and uh, without doing the actual meditation. But essentially what it involves is having the client just take a couple of breaths to connect with the body and then look in there while they have the eyes closed, look in their mind's eye around their universe, around their world and just see if they, if any of their, they sense any of their energy that is scattered here or there. Because often when we're so busy or stressed, it's like <gasps> we're just scattered and just calling, consciously calling all of those parts of you back into the moment and into your body where you're sitting or lying right now. So calling yourself back, calling your energy back and then taking just a, a minute or two to do that. And then once again, looking around your universe in your mind's eye and seeing if you are carrying anybody else's energy, anybody else's burdens, their responsibilities, your, maybe you're carrying expectations from society or your job or your family or expectations you put on yourself even. Um, and then send all of that energy back. Just temporarily, it's important to know. It's like, oh, I can't send the, the energy, the stress, the burden of taking care of my kids back. 
can't send that. I can't let that go. You can just put it in a little box next to you, just temporarily parking, just, just emptying out of that pressure or that sense of burden of that responsibility. So sending all that back and you're just emptying out of everything that you've been carrying. The, you know, the, you know, we talk about the, the suitcase of emotional baggage. Well, we tend to accumulate that on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're just emptying out. And then you, once the client has emptied out, you find that miraculously when they check in with their own energy now, that they've called their energy back, they've sent everybody else's and everything else away, that they suddenly, who they are in this moment, calm, clear, connected, and able to hear a sense of clear, or get a sense of clear direction, the best direction forward. So it's very, very fast and easy way to just come home to yourself and reorient around, you know, a higher vision for your life that is more in line with happiness and fulfillment and self-actualization. So um, that's one little thing that we do. And it doesn't take long. And it just goes to show that doesn't matter what stresses you're carrying, it's it's all it's it's all in the head. It really comes down to it all being in the head because whatever negative emotion that you're feeling is connected with your thinking. Um, so if you can empty your, your mind out, you're also going to empty out your your um, your emotional baggage too. Yes, that's um, a beautiful meditation. A five-minute meditation called Coming Home to Yourself. I think um, people should just sign up with you <laughs> to learn more about it. It sounds awesome. Um, and, and I have, I have, um, uh, Sahaj, I, ha I have participated in that meditation. It's, it is beautiful. And uh, you're right about, you know, the, the baggage that we have, the suitcase, we, mm. there's an invisible bag that we are holding every single day. And if we process that, that invisible luggage and let it go, uh, mm. it will be so much more lighter. We'll be walking mm. with all the fears are, are gone because yeah. it's that bag is essentially holding those fears that's in mm -hmm. our bag mm -hmm. and sometimes True. when I work with people who are looking for work and they tell me they've been looking for the past year and they haven't had any results and I said well you've got a brand new resume now got brand new tools yeah. let the old bag go you have to let the old bag yeah. go because if you hold on to it every time you go to the next interview you still have that heavy bag on your mm -hmm. back and it's heavy you feel yeah. it Mm -hmm. So yes, um, processing uh, your emotions and um, coming. So, what do you do, Leone? I mean, I know we've done a lot sure. of work together, but what's your favorite practice? Thank you for asking. Uh, look, I would just want to share with everyone listening mm -hmm. that um, I do have a document here, and it's called um, "Managing Unhappy Emotions," and this is a technique I learned from a um, a yoga teacher, and this is in Bali. I think it was about 2017 from a yoga teacher named um, Anamika and um, she taught me a, a mindfulness technique to manage through this the in unhappy emotions and she said you know first you've got to work out why you're feeling this way you know what is the story that you're telling yourself why are you feeling this way and really gain but like you said before, be really honest with yourself mm. and ask yourself, why are you feeling this way? What are the stories you're playing? Is it something from the past that's coming up? So you really need to find time to uh, investigate, explore within yourself. <coughs> and then um, uh, once you identify the anger that you're feeling, because a lot of times you're at this, you know, sometimes we don't know what we're feeling. So mm -hmm. um, to identify what is the emotion, and it might be anger, for example, then to then go through three stages of first to fully understand the, understand the feeling, and then to then acknowledge the feeling, and then to for, fully accept the feeling and throughout all this this technique you you take and there are, you do take some deep breaths deep breathing and then finally um, letting it go and so it is a quite 
um, there's quite a lot of detail in the pro this process. So if there's anyone mm -hmm. who's listening or watching, if you're interested, please send me an email and I'm happy to send this document to you. And certainly uh, that's what I use. And I'll use it from time and time again for myself. Uh, whenever I'm feeling um, uneasiness, unhappy emotions, and just go through and, and literally probably take five, 10 minutes and just to um, close my eyes and practice um, this mindfulness technique and it makes a significant difference in really just being and feeling the emotion and then letting it go. Yeah, good. Can you relate to that? I can. Yes. Yeah, it's good. It's a very good process. Very yeah. good laid out um, step by step process. Yeah. Yeah. And we all need something. And there are there's, there's a, a lot of different ways uh, and techniques and strategies for managing emotions. You just need to look around. You just need to want it. Mm. And then and just begin some kind of practice that works for you. Yes. And, and experiment and have a tool toolkit as they say, a toolbox full of different strategies that you can use because sometimes a strategy will work for one emotion but it won't work for another. Or, and we need to just like figure out, keep keep working on it until we find what works. Yes. Yes. So I'm just wondering in terms of um, the services and programs you offer, um, I know you've got a Facebook page. So um, yeah. what's the name of your Facebook page? Uh, so um, the business page is Personal Growth plus and my name is Sahaja Samarasa and I run uh, retreats, workshops, courses and um, work one-on-one -on -one with people. My sessions are really are twofold and that is it's, it's emotional psychological healing and processing that is also uh, spiritual in nature so we're always bringing spirit, your spirit, your soul into each session um, it, it's about processing whatever's in the way whatever's the density and uh, whatever's causing you pain or suffering or and then if we want to clear that and then we want to connect you with your soul we want to connect you with your higher guidance with your clarity with your vision for yourself and with those real clear next next best steps that you for you towards what it is that is uh, your own um, uh, best version of yourself. So that's what the sessions are, are uh, about. Mm, thank you, Sahaja. I highly recommend her work, I love her work. Um, I am a client and I am um, here for many years and the, the meditation that you have worked with me um, has been groundbreaking. And I know from the very first moment speaking with you, you said that you work to ensure that every session is, there's a result. If there's no result, then you're not doing your work. So that's- Yeah, yeah. I, I aim for a, really a breakthrough, some kind of a psychological, emotional, spiritual breakthrough in every session. And if you don't get that, then I really feel like I'm not yeah. doing my job. And, right. and, and, we, we, and we get there. Yes. Yeah, so certainly. Um, yeah, meditation is has changed my life, and I've learned so yeah. much from you, Sahaja. So yeah, thank you thank so much you. for um, your time. Thank you for today. having me. <laughs> and uh, we'll be in touch very soon. Yes. <laughs> Thanks.